When we test the 210 degrees, that is what they call kinematic viscosity. What's kinematic means? It means has motion. Motion. That's what it means. Kinematic motion. Think of it as dynamic motion. And what they do is they take this, this, this nice looking tester and it's got a small hole, an orifice, in the bottom of a volume. Let's just say that volume's a pint, okay, for lack of any other testing. And they got this little hole in the bottom of it, okay? Now, they heat the volume of oil in boiling water, and they're saying it's 210 degrees in this water. They've got it very accurately done, and then what it's done is it's, it's poured into this container, and it starts flowing through this hole, right? Now, they've got an accurate watch that starts timing, it flows through there. If it flows through there in a certain limit of seconds, let's say you had to put it in there and it had to flow through in 30 seconds to 45 seconds, that was the band. If it flows through in 30 to 45 seconds, it would qualify as a 30 weight oil. If it took it 45 to 60 seconds for the same volume to flow through at that temperature, it would be a 40 weight oil. And I'm just giving you numbers, I don't know which ones they are. They used to call those universal Sabolt seconds. That was the thing. How many seconds it takes, or, or fractions of a second to pour through there. That's all it is. How fast can the oil? So the thicker the oil, the longer it takes it to flow through that hole, right? Now that is kinematic viscosity. That is dynamic testing something flowing through. Now on the other end, to test how it will function in cold weather, they don't do that test because if the oil was so thick, it'd just sit there and it wouldn't flow through the orifice. Hey, Charlie, nothing's happening. It's not going anywhere. It's like a ball of wax sitting in this thing. It's not going anywhere. So what they do, they take a cup Okay, they fill it full of oil that's cold at the temperature that's required. Say uh, that it's zero degrees. They get this thing stabilized zero degrees. They set this cup on top of this thing that is basically a magnetic stirrer. What it's got is a little tiny precision motor that's turning a magnet. In the oil, they have another magnet sitting here. That magnet's supposed to follow the magnet down here, right? Okay, that little motor goes over here and they have a precision milliamp meter that measures amperage in milliamps or one thousandth of an amp, okay? The amount of current it takes for this to be able to turn that magnet in that cold oil is what they're testing. And so again, they set a range of amperage that says that this, if it will turn that magnet and draw 322 milliamps, right? then that qualifies as a 10W. Now, different than the other one, all being at, at 210 degrees, when they want to test something as a 5W, they actually go down 5 degrees, colder, and test it, and it still has to either achieve that amperage or even a lower amperage. So what are they really testing? They're testing the ability of the oil to lubricate a moving part when it's very cold. Will the oil actually allow the part to move and not channel, if you know what I mean, and it can actually move in this thick liquid and it stays a liquid and lets it move in it. If it does that, then they want to know how well does it do it. Well, the little motor tells you how much energy it's taken to make this thing turn. And so what that is more of a test is of the resistance to moving parts <coughs> within the volume of oil. Because that's what you run into trouble with with cold oil. Can you pump it? Can you move it through gears? Can you get it to move? Hot oil, what we're worried about is, well, it got hot, is how thick, what, how much is left? Does it have any oil film? Has it blown away? But cold, our problem is, can we get it to move? Okay, so that's what the W measures. So when people say, yeah, but isn't that the same, uh, it, that means that it's like a, 10 weight oil, well actually the, they're so different in what they're measuring. This one measures what they call real viscosity. This one measures what's called apparent viscosity. This one is measured in centistokes. They call this centipoise. Okay? Now, what we need to know about that is that's fine how that neat little laboratory test is done. The important thing to understand is, is that the W is trying to tell us how well will this oil function in winter or cold weather. The lower number, better it does. A zero W will pump at the coldest temperature for oils we got right now, whereas a 20 W 
doesn't do all that well in cold weather. And then what happens is we go up to 25W and then it disappears and we just shift over to 20 weight uh, by the kinematic viscosity. And here's the consumer question. <coughs> yes, sir. Well, that's really nice, but it's 92 degrees outside. What Absolutely. Is 0, 10, and 20 meters? They don't matter. Do they don't matter. We say that all the time, and I tell people that all the time. They go, well, I can't use a 0W30. Isn't that too thin? And I go, no, because all you care about in Florida is the upper number. The lower number never, ever comes in to use if you stay above 32 degrees. Well, it looks like it, the W, you'd think. But it really is just winter rating. And so when people ask me, well, can I use, how can I, I can't use a 0W20, I've got to use a 5W20. And I go, are you going to Alaska? Well, no. Well, in Florida, it doesn't make any difference. The second number is your operational viscosity when your car is wound up, running down the road. The first number means just how well it's going to do below zero. Do you expect to be below zero here? No. <clears throat> well, then use either one. 0W30, 5W30, 10W30, straight 30. In this climate, except for maybe one or two days a year in January when it might hit 20 degrees, you could use a straight 30 here and never know the difference. Okay. The only reason I use a 0W30 is change volume. 0W30 is a better oil. I thought it was no. too bad. No, the 0W30 <laughs> is the premium <coughs> synthetic in the 30 weights. And the reason for that is, is if you see some ads once in a while, you'll know, because if you see these ads from mobile, it says, this is our premium PAO. They're, they're hacking, they're, they're talking about it now. That's what Amazon's bought for years from mobile for the 0W30, is the more expensive, uh, highly, uh, you know, purified, perfect PAO base stock from mobile. It costs more money, but it is the, the premium one. So they're not charging us this extra money for the 0W30 just to charge us extra money. They're paying more money for that superior base stock they buy to go into it. So it is the, the premium of the 30 weights. Is that a different base than the uh, Series 3000? Because they use the I think it's the same. I think it's the same. And I wonder whether they chip what they No, I, I, I think it's the same, Michael. I think that's the same base stock, one for a 5W30 for a diesel and one for a 0W30 for gasoline application. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the HDD is, is the best if you go into include diesel rating. I'm just talking about for the 30 weight gasoline engine oil, so 0W30 is the top. For a universal one, the 5W30 would be the tougher one.